guys welcome back to the channel I'm bind and today I'm gonna show you how to do some line art and then prepare it and color it in Photoshop so let's get into it now first of all guys I recorded the process of painting the image drawing the image I should say but because my camera is not the hottest and uh, it's not a real treat to watch because it just lacks some resolution and some clarity and I want to make that better in further episodes but for now I will use that as a trial I will still show it to you I'll just um, make it a time lapse fast forward through it and give you some commentary on it um, basically how I drew the baseline drawing of uh, this um, series so give me a second because it's blurring it out now by the way behind me is my analog working area where I um, usually draw all the traditional stuff uh, line art watercolor so this is what I came up with which is basically an A4 paper with a grain to it you can maybe see it on. so I like to use paper with a little bit of a grain because um, you get some natural texture to it if you're not doing it digitally um, that is I think it's nice to have it gives it gives it some real analog touch so in case you're wondering um, what I used here that is a uh, uh, Canson mixed media uh, slash um, watercolor sketchbook A4. I think it's something like 300 grams pages, so it's really thick. You can uh, put water directly on this; it doesn't matter. Uh, I use it for all kinds. I use it for um, um, pencil sketching, fine liner sketching, like this. Um, and of course uh, watercolor and uh, mixing the two so pen I used here old German Faber Castell but you can of course use any uh, Copic or other fine liners um, of any brand uh, I would just suggest make it um, waterproof uh, in case you have any anything <laughs> going on in terms of uh, uh, water or if you if you want to put um, um, wet media on it so I always use these uh, this is a uh, 0.1 and I use up uh, to a 0.7 depending on uh, the um, fidelity I want from the stroke so without further ado let's get into the first step which is sketching the whole thing so yeah this is um, the pencil sketching process and um, as I told you before you can clearly see that my camera might be enough to record my face but it's not enough to pick up all the details when it comes to such an intricate sketch and also another problem is that um, the contrast is not that high because I'm sketching very faintly so here's how that sketch looks closer up and you can see kind of see the fidelity and the paper grain there um, so uh, I decided to spare you with that process and then uh, in a minute we'll get to the more interesting part which is of course doing uh, the line art Right, and I'm using the Faber Castell point one here. Uh, the paper format is A4. So yeah, don't worry, <laughs> I'm not that fast. It's just a time lapse, of course, um, because I think the whole thing is quite intricate, and it is, as you can see, um, a complicated image. Meaning there is people, there's a foreground, there's overlapping, um, mid-grounds, backgrounds, uh, lots of objects, architecture, um, sky, um, buildings, um, structures, 
uh, natural environment so yeah what I'm doing is um, I'm sketching drawing I should say um, the foreground first and I'm always starting on uh, an object that is not so important to me it's more of a freeform object and the reason for that is because I need to get my hand warmed up so I will never start with something that is very critical like the character so I'm getting warmed up on the rocks and uh, the bushes and leaves because you can't really mess those up if you have experience and then once I feel confident basically I'm going to the very detailed characters because there if you miss a stroke it could be really uh, a problem right of course you can also um, and I will show you this later in Photoshop you can also correct stuff later digitally if your goal is to produce a digital colored image like we do in this um, process um, that's possible but I like to take it as serious as possible and really uh, draw the strokes with uh, like the analog style let's say because there is a difference uh, between doing a digital and the feeling you get on such a grainy paper and uh, also my style again is uh, um, I think kind of in the middle between it's not it's not really very Western it's also not uh, very Eastern it's it's just kind of a mixture I think like many Europeans have to be honest so yeah and this piece is kind of a um, graphic novel that I'm doing in secrecy <laughs> and uh yeah there's characters in a fairly um yeah fictional uh, world and uh so here it's like the concept is more like a wandering uh on elevation like above the clouds and there's uh, structures and it's like kind of a mystical uh, landscape right so two protagonists almost done and then there is uh, a way out of the image to the upper right or to the middle right and then basically you can come around and you can kind of uh, get this uh, from the image you can come around uh, the path to th the buildings or uh, passing by those buildings then later that is what gives it depth and that is what I think makes it interesting to introduce a way into the image and also uh, a kind of a destination or a waypoint marker so about the um, design process there is really um, I think too much to get into at this point but basically in this I'm doing it without ref because I wanted to be remember my own graphic novel at some point so um, the pencil sketching took me I think uh, 90 minutes alone and now this uh, doing this uh, kind of a uh, line art uh, to completion because it's fairly intricate it takes I think approximately two hours and 40 minutes something like that um, so I'm giving you pretty real numbers here because I want you to uh, like um, com compare with your uh, own process and see if you uh, are very uh, much slower or faster even uh, I think it's decently fast I heard a lot of people uh, being uh, slower and if you are slow don't worry like it's it's how much you train really like you can't be as fast as somebody who already trained it for 10 years or 20 years right so naturally compared to like a, a manga artist I am slow right so <laughs> it's just um, always uh, think about that so yeah then I think foreground is getting more more complete so I like the um, to mix all the eras of uh, architecture like you can see in the arc and uh, on those buildings it's uh, yeah it's kind of a retro uh, retro uh, fiction but a uh, little bit steampunky a little bit a uh, little bit um, yeah um, how would you call that it's it's uh, 
developed modern fi modern fiction uh, era, I would say. Um, not not science fiction, but yeah, as I said, more than, more like a steampunky thing. And I think it's good to have uh, whatever you want in your story to also like have it as little storytelling elements in the images, right? And architecture is good for that, and also our uh, yeah little plants or little um, yeah objects in in the back or along the wayside. So uh, very early decided to have a tree come from the right here and. It can be infinitely intricate with uh, drawing these trees. So for me, is always uh, that is a, a good like drawing nature is with a fine liner is a very good consideration of um, yeah level of abstraction I would say because obviously you cannot draw every single leaf but then you have to. You have to stylize it and the the question is where it really gets interesting is to see how different artists stylize it in different ways i think uh so um for me in uh in my teens it was um things like apple seed it was um th uh, things like shiro who drew um uh, lots of environments which i really like i like the environments much more than i did like the characters in uh, in 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 his work for example but it was um so i am influenced by this uh in the line art i think early well, not not so early but uh 80s 90s japanese um drawings and then but i didn't follow uh, this uh, what you would call now today uh standard manga and anime is uh, i find it rather boring so but that's just me so any anyone should do what they like to do now you can see i'm sketching some clouds in the back and not all of these lines have to stay in there or uh, i should say not all of these lines uh, have to stay black eventually because we're going into photoshop and i will show you a technique of how to isolate the sketch and then what you can do is you can even um, color the lines later even though they are drawn traditionally now we scan it uh, in high fidelity uh, in like 600 dpi or something like that and then i'm going to show you how to isolate the stroke later So what you also can see, and uh, some people cannot do this at all, is to draw without turning the paper constantly. And that is just something that uh, some teachers at art school will demand of you because they will claim that it's important to be able to go outside, just hold up uh, your sketchbook and just draw without turning the paper. I think that's kind of bullshit. <laughs> However, I think it is very handy and it's very uh, much a matter of skill if you can manage to draw without turning the paper all the time. And you will see me turn it once in a while and that is mainly to draw ellipses and uh, rounder stuff. I have a harder time. Everything else I don't need to touch, um, uh, rotate the canvas uh, usually. So it's a little bit like, um, but that is practice also uh, for sure. Um, I used to draw much more when I was younger and then the last like 10-15 years it was more digital painting for sure. But yeah, it's 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 a very nice thing to have something analog that you that exists in reality on a piece of paper and to have that be any good I think is still um uh, really um a very nice thing to have. So yeah, we were almost complete and then of course what I need to do is because the pencil stroke is still in there in a second, now you see me uh, switching also to a thicker uh, stylus here. Um, so to draw in some of the blacks and if I do a lot of black I will even sometimes use a very very uh, thick brush. Uh, and uh, Faber Castell they have a very thick uh, brushes i think maybe you will even see it in a second here uh, and that is to 
draw huge uh, black areas. Uh, you don't want to do that with the fine liner. So let's uh, have a look quickly on how this thing turned out just after erasing out all of the pencil strokes that you can't barely see because of, like I said, the quality of the camera. And also, yeah, uh, my pencil strokes are very faint. But now, we'll see, now this is real time again done with the erasing and now you will be able to see the fidelity of that stroke and why it took me almost three hours to do that um, yeah I'm sure you can do it faster but um, I like to really yeah put emphasis on the style because I know digitally I cannot be as stylish with the strokes as I can doing it by hand all right, guys, we are in Photoshop and I have to have a sip of coffee first. So what are we doing? Um, first of all, I scanned the image, as you can see. Um, for those interested, let me quickly see. I'm using the Epson Perfection V39. Uh, really good scanner, really cheap too. I think it's uh, like 100 euros, uh, $120, something like that. Um, yeah, produces great results up to uh, 1200 dpi, I think. I use 600 dpi for this. And now, if you scan your image, it looks pretty much somewhat like this, right? So, uh, let's first check resolution here. Resolution is plenty. Um, yeah, 6300 by 4600. Um, now, that will be good. And the first thing is that we need to check if it's scanned good, scanned correctly, if all, if it's, uh, yeah, sharp at all. So that looks good. Um, so, yeah, just be sure that it's something, a result that you can work with. Um, zoom out again you could already see that there is some paper grain in there stuff that we need to address also untagged RGB um, profile quickly change that to sRGB um, I elaborate on that in my lengthy tutorial uh, titled the only digital painting tutorial you need so in case you're interested in that, just watch part one of that. I will explain all of the basics in Photoshop. So now, um, rotate the image, make sure it is um, the right orientation too. And if it's still, uh, if it's still not correct, um, like the little corrections we do that um, not by rotating the canvas but by rotating the layer which now uh, I will duplicate this layer put white in the back so that I just have this layer separate and I can operate it separately if you wonder if your layer uh, if this layer is straight if orientation is right you can do this via the ruler. Let's see if it is um, okay. And now you can see that probably I have to rotate it towards the upper right a little bit. So try that. Yeah, something like that, I guess. See how this looks good also it's important that if there's characters that the character like is orientated in a way that you can feel like um, the weight uh, balancing on the feet it should not be keeling over or anything so yeah this works um, pretty well I think uh, yeah we'll leave it at that also of course building architecture is an indicator you're happy hit apply 
now we can check for those lines see these lines are good then we are I think good this is uh, killed on purpose <laughs> don't worry about that the same with this it's just like a little dynamic here uh, so but yeah you have to know you have to know what you intended for your artwork right so once this is good I'm doing away with uh, these guides um, and now we can pretty much um, yeah frame the thing which what I mean by that is that get rid of um, the like uh, the parts of the canvas that you don't want in there and I will be careful not to chop any of my hard work <laughs> away here now this is kind of some sometimes you can even uh, and we'll do this in a second you can even add to what you've drawn if there's something missing I will do this down here just to get a little bit more real estate here and then up here I don't need that much I just need there will be blue in the sky followed by white of the cloud silhouetting the building and then there will be blue bleeding through down here and then there will be white again for those clouds in the foreground that's my plan so now yeah next thing have a look at this see if uh, there is stuff that needs correcting contrast seems pretty good but of course I also talked about this before if I hover over here you will see the info down here RGB values and it will clearly tell you that it's not pure white uh, it's uh, like for example this value is 238 237 235 it means two things first that's not white second there is a color in there because equal uh, neutral gray in RGB would mean uh, the exact same values on every channel so what that means is first get rid of the color that you can barely perceive it but it's there so what we're doing is we're going in here and clicking desaturate and when you do this you saw the color shifting just a tiny bit and now there is no color in there you look down here anywhere I hover all the RGB values are exactly the same which means it's neutral gray neutral whites neutral blacks everywhere so next thing is to optimize the levels and if you don't know what the levels are that's basically uh, the tonal distribution uh, of where there is something going on on the canvas and where there is not so huge spike here not surprising because that is the white bright gray background basically is this huge spike and then all of that not so much is the line work and the gray scale that goes from the edges of the black lines towards the white the anti-aliasing pixels they are in between here so i'm guessing most of the lines are here right here and then some here and that is this part is grace towards leaning towards the background and this whole thing is just the background so getting the grain out by turning this down make sure you have preview active so that you can judge the difference right and then what we can do is hover over here and see the new values now in here is pretty black it's zero it's two yeah very very dark and then on some instances we have it like be um, 46 uh, here uh, so we can play around with that it gets darker but be careful because if you crank this up you see what happens it gets too thick it destroys all your natural stroke all of the nice thing that the paper gave you will destroy so don't do that uh, just elevating this a little bit to get the black a little bit more crispy because this is an image where the line work matters a lot it will stay in there and it is kind of the whole appeal it's almost more important than the coloring so here the same by changing the mids you change the thickness of the stroke because 
the parts of the line where it it's on the on the outside it goes to gray that gets darker or brighter depending on what you're doing here so i don't want it to be clumped up like this it's a terrible look so what i'm doing is i'm keeping it down here one is the neutral and then just keep it down a little bit i want the stroke to be elegant right um so once you're happy with that you can hit okay uh, now measure uh, some more find that your blacks are really dark now it's almost all of them are as zero so that's good um, and then there's stuff in between lines that are not zero and yeah so because if you have black now let's zoom in there a little bit you will see that here's still some paper grain right here if i hover here is 255 on every channel that means everywhere here is white but not everywhere here is white it deviates uh, on the left side so what we can do is we can make this a little bit better either by just selecting that area or you could erase it out manually which is kind of a pain in the ass so uh, i would not i would try to avoid this so for now we'll we'll do that because you can also have a selection going and then just go and change the levels again and now you can see that we get this out hit okay it's done smooth 255 everywhere all the way to the edge so that's good that's what we want now there is some parts that are appear cropped you can be okay with that or you can um yeah add uh to those lines a little bit um i think because i yeah i kind of like the composition uh, with it being wider let's change it just a little bit and then the rest but see I don't want to crop too much from this also down there a little bit Yeah, I will warn you that it crops the image, no shit. Right, so now, how do you add to this? Because, see, now this looks very analog, very nice. So you, we don't want to mess that up. And also you can see there is still some little areas where there is kind of bright uh, strokes going on. So I have one more. We'll do one more correction on this. Now the rest I have to deal with it manually. But first, um, if you happen to have a brush at hand that resembles this style which I do and if you don't know how to have that um, I talked about this in my video where I show how to make a basic brush in Photoshop and the brush we made was this brush now for this job it's not quite the right brush but you get the idea I have however a brush that I created for myself that see is very close to what is happening here so with the right size of a brush that means I can just I can just add to that stroke and you will not be able to tell that much of a difference right and also what I need is an eraser for this stuff little parts that I don't like 
but again I'm just eliminating what is clearly not supposed to be there like I'm not doing this super super clean I think it's not worth it you should not uh, overdo this right so what I'm now interested at in is just this side here see how here all of those gaps I want to fill them so that it just feels very normal uh, for the image to go all the way to the edge so with a brush like this that's really not very yeah hard to do also once in a while erase some little minor stuff sometimes the scanner plays dirty a little bit so if you move the canvas you will see imperfections better right and of course you can also erase with um, with a brush like this which gives you a little bit better of an edge if you're erasing close to an edge of a line um, and then also of course we can add to it here but here you see that strokes get a little bit brighter now this was a little bit too much I have a soft version of this now let's try that yeah something like this so All right this is not um, it's just a little trick that I developed to be able to correct some stuff because imagine you took all the time to draw such an intricate piece right and then you fuck up on the guy's head and that's there's such a shame right of course you need a, a way to correct this <laughs> if you're working digitally um, like if, if not that's really it's such a bummer so fortunately in digital art we have this option right we don't need to be perfect but fortunately for me I had a good day when I did this and uh, this turned out okay so I don't have to correct that much so now you here you can see I can just basically fill this and then on the edge got to be careful keep the style that was I think a seven or a six and then I do the same thing yeah just so you cannot notice that I did anything now the rest kind of looks okay uh, well I uh, forgot about this here as a no-no of course because yeah there needs to be something here obviously don't be perfect because the analog uh, it was also not perfect if you now draw all these lines like super perfect it will not integrate as, as well so it is the thing that you want is the breaking of the line and all the stuff that the paper brings that adds to your style and to the credibility uh, of the uh, entire piece uh, so don't be careful not to destroy what is good about the analog process right don't now zoom in there and like correct every single stroke so I will just what sticks out I will I will address and even if I have a little bit of this grain going on it doesn't matter because once there's color in there you will not see this is a hair that you need to address of course little stuff like this so now I think we're good pretty much this is um, what I want to work with and now um, the last thing to do because we could technically start now but uh, what we we have this layer and this layer now looks ha has a few holes because I erased some stuff doesn't matter because behind there will be color 
remember but now what we can do is uh, we can put this on multiply and then just paint away with the color right that's great but uh, I said earlier that if you want to color the stroke you need to isolate the stroke so how to isolate the stroke let me show you this I want you to be on the right layer which is the layer of the drawing and then what we do is we do a color range selection and instead of the um, default value which is the sampled color and in most cases sample colored means has something to do with whatever color you picked over here I want you to go in here and select shadows and then what we do is we crank this up now if you crank this up as well you will just get everything including the white which is not what we want we want only the blacks so very close to this actually so let's try how this looks now you get a crazy selection and sometimes this will look you will not be able to judge fully if this is good or not now with this selection active we make a new layer then you can switch off the old layer be on the new layer select deep black and then fill the selection and then deselect right so we have now a version of that same sketch and it looks pretty okay if you want to compare this obviously you cannot just compare it like this because this has no background and you will just blend over it but what you can do as a little trick for comparison is to inject a white layer in between like so make this a clipping mask and now if you switch off the white layer this switches off with it and that way you can compare the real difference that is now the real difference you can see how the selected sketch is a little bit thinner but it looks pretty good I would say now to, to change how this looks you have to tinker with the color selection um, a little bit right so let's try one more time uh, select the color range again now I give it a little bit more range and what that will do is it may, will make the selected stuff is the white stuff right it will make that thicker as you can see uh, so I will just give it that a little bit more just like 15 I don't even know if this is percent uh, yeah tone value whatever and then do the same thing over again new layer fill the layer will black deselect and now compare it again it is now very very similar you can compare it to this this is a little bit fainter I like this version better because it's closer to the original so this gets deleted I do not need the white layer anymore so release the clipping mask get rid of the white layer that was just for comparison now this is now let's not confuse you guys white background original layer which has some holes in it but the white is baked in as you can clearly see it here new layer only strokes no white background is baked in here even though on the white background it looks the same right but what is the advantage now check this out I can now do this it's cool right I can 
color the line art which is amazing that is something uh, and uh, also <laughs> a lot of people don't know this trick and they're not good with the color range selection uh, selector and uh, find other workarounds but don't take your time to get uh, get your uh, get to grips with the with the color range uh, selection it is so powerful so anyways guys I will use this next time to continue uh, putting color in this image it is now prepared it is just ready to go ready to put in uh, um, all the layers of color and I will show you next time how to organize them guys I hope you like this cup handle is still broken maybe YouTube lets me monetize one of these days so I can buy a new cup um, but next time I will show you how to put color on this line art let me know down below if you like that for a change because you might have only seen me paint digitally up to now and um, be confused but I said it before I said it uh, in the uh, 1000 subs video uh, I do lots of illustration not only digital painting not only concept art uh, I like to show more than just one thing I think that's interesting and what I also think is that from one thing you can learn about another thing there's uh, great lessons to be learned from drawing for painting and vice versa of course so hope you enjoyed this episode see you next time when we do the color and all of the little tricks to make this look like a full-blown artwork take care